do this? Let's do it. Okay. Let's initiate Kids Club large group countdown sequence. Give me a go, no go for launch. Flight crew. Go flight. Kids. Go flight. Listening ears. We're gonna go flight. Synergyometer. Go flight. Omnivision. Go flight. Space speed. Oh. We're gonna go flight. And projector. We're gonna go flight. <laughs> Mission Control, this is Kids Club. We are go for launch. Five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. Matthew 6, 10 says, your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hello, and welcome to Kids Club Central Command. Our mission here is, well, maybe you should hear it from the founder of KCMC, Dr. Archibald Leopold Ogical the I. Watch this. Here at Kids Club Mission Control, we theorize that God created us in order to show love back to God and to show love to others. And that by doing all of this, we will look more like him. And we believe that that will be, well, <laughs> staggeringly stupendous. We rely on the Bible for our research, and here you will find all of my research to date, which clearly shows how different habits and ways of living can affect us and others and the entire world. Now, first, let's discuss my research. And as you know, that's where the video cuts out. But. The good news is we have all of this research from Dr. Ogical and his team, and Mission Control has been using this research to learn more about being like Jesus and how that can change us and others and the whole world. Today, let's look at this one. All right. Okay. Huh. Huh. Well. Dr. Ogical and his team are at it again. I can't figure this out at all. Why do these big ideas always have to be so complicated? May, I think I found something that will help answer your question. What did you find? Well, you know how I've been working on this exciting new project that will eliminate cookie crumbs in space? Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. The crumb number. Right, and while I was looking for some supplies for this machine, I found a second tape of Dr. Ogical. What? And you watched it without me? Well, you were working on your invention. Oh, fair enough. Well, what are you waiting for? Show me the tape. If you're watching this, you might be wondering why it can be so difficult to be like Jesus. If it's so good to be like him, to be loving and kind, why isn't it easier? And why doesn't everybody else around us do it too? <laughs> well, friends, you have stumbled upon one of life's great mysteries, and you're not the first to wonder. Even in the Bible, the apostle Paul <laughs> wondered why he did the things he knew he shouldn't do, and why he didn't do the things he knew he should. It's a conundrum, and it's part of being human. But when we decide to follow Jesus, we ask him to help us make our decisions because we want to be more like him, treat people the way he did, and live like he did. And that costs us something. Do you want to know what it costs us? I will tell you what it costs us. It costs us this word that you probably heard somewhere before. The word is... That didn't help me figure out this clue at all. I am so frustrated. May, why don't you take a minute, relax. Here, 
have some dehydrated astronaut ice cream. Oh. And let me figure this one out. But your crumb number. Oh, it's okay. I can come back to it later. Okay. All right, let's just read this clue here. <clears throat> let's Zach Reef Ice 4-H author. Nothing. Let's Zach Reef Ice 4-H author. Ah, maybe backwards. Author H4 Ice Reef Zach Let's. Let's Zach Reef Ice 4-H author. Let's Zach Reef Ice 4-H author. Let's Zach Reef Ice 4-H author. Chris! Let, yep. Yeah. Read that again, slowly. Okay. Let's Zach Reef Ice 4-H author. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Read that again, slowly, but still human. Oh, okay. Let's Zach Reef Ice 4-H author. Huh. Let me see. Close your eyes. Oh, okay. Just listen. Okay. Let's sacrifice for each other. Oh, that sounds like it said let's sacrifice for each other. I think that's today's big idea. Oh my goodness, we got it! Yes! Yes! Okay. All right. <laughs> now I guess we just have to figure out how sacrificing for each other changes us and changes others and can change the whole world. Do you have an invention for that, May? I don't think I need an invention. I think I just experienced it, and you all saw it too. Really? Yeah, I was just about to lose my noodles over figuring out that big idea, and even though you were working on something that really excited you, you saw me struggling, and you stopped what you were doing to help me. <laughs> wow, I thought I was just helping a friend. You were, and you sacrificed your time and what you were interested in to help me. You helped me calm down and reset so I wasn't frustrated for the rest of the day. Well, I'm glad it helped. <laughs> it sure did. And so did this ice cream. You want the rest? Wait, you would sacrifice your most favorite treat? And it's your favorite flavor. It's trout berry. <laughs> it's all yours, buddy. I think we both just learned a little about how sacrificing can affect us and others. I mean, sometimes it can be hard to sacrifice for each other. It might mean that you don't get what you want right when you want it. It might mean someone else gets what you want. It usually means giving something up so that someone else can be blessed. And when you care about someone, it's easier to sacrifice for them because you want good things for them. Now, let's take a look at the Omnivision and see what the Bible has to say about how sacrificing for someone else can affect others. Omnivision, play God's story, the Good Samaritan. Playing God's story, the Good Samaritan, in three, two, one. God's story, the Good Samaritan. So part of God's story is about a Good Samaritan, and it goes like this. When Jesus lived on earth, he often told stories to teach us things. Stories that teach a lesson are called parables. One day, Jesus told a parable about a good guy from a place called Samaria, a good Samaritan, to a group of Jewish people. It all started when a Jewish expert in the law asked Jesus, what must I do to receive eternal life? Basically, he was asking, what do I have to do to be perfect? Since this guy was an expert in the law, he thought he already knew how to be perfect because he knew all the rules. He just wanted to see what Jesus would say. Of course, Jesus knew what the man was thinking, so he asked him, what is written in the law? The man said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. So he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus answered him by telling this story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Everybody listening was Jewish, and they could probably all picture the exact road Jesus was talking about. He continued, a priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. You might expect a priest who was supposed to serve God to help, but he didn't stop. Then Jesus said, a Levite came to the place and saw him, but he passed by on the other side too. Levites were assistants to priests, so maybe you'd expect them to help too, but he didn't stop either. Finally, Jesus said, a Samaritan came along. Remember, a Samaritan is a person from Samaria. That's near Israel, where God's family, the Jews, lived. But here's the thing, Jews and Samaritans didn't get along. In fact, 
Nobody hearing this story would ever expect the Samaritan to help because Samaritans and Jews couldn't stand each other. But Jesus said, when the Samaritan saw the man and took pity on him, he went to him and bandaged his wounds. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out money and gave it to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will pay you back for any extra expense you have. Then Jesus asked, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law didn't even want to say the word Samaritan, but he admitted the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. In other words, go and love everyone, even people we don't like or people who everybody else wants to avoid. See, when we show love, we're obeying Jesus. Obeying God doesn't mean just doing what his rules say. It means loving him more than anything and showing his love to every single person that we meet. And that's the story of the Good Samaritan. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. A man asked Jesus how to get eternal life. Jesus said, what is written in the law? The man said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Then the man asked, who is my neighbor? Jesus told a story. If you miss Jesus' story, here's the quick, quick version. A Jewish man got beat up. A priest walked by. A priest assistant passed by. A man from Samaria actually did help. That was a surprise. Jesus had taught them, we obey God when we show love. And that's part of God's story. Okay, let me just finish writing that down. Jesus taught that when we show love to people, we're obeying God. Mm -hmm. And that we should love everyone, not just the people it's easy to love or the people we like. When we love people like Jesus did, we're being more like him. We also learned there are all sorts of dehydrated desserts made for astronauts. Huh? Oh, <laughs> how'd that get in there? Uh, Kids Club, your mission control team needs to take a short break to um, check the You're calibration. You're still thinking about uh, astronaut desserts? Yeah. All right, well, Kids Club, when we come back, we'll find out how sacrificing for each other could change the whole world. So what else do you got? Astronaut marshmallows, astronaut ice cream sandwiches, astronaut creme brulee, come with me! <laughs> oh la la! Welcome back to Mission Control. We uh, had to do some really important research on these Cosmo Cubes, but we're back and ready to find out how sacrificing for each other can change us, others, and the whole world. And you know who can help us understand how it will change the whole world? Time to talk to the captain. Oh. Captain? Captain, can you hear us? Sure can. How goes it down there on terra firma? terra what Oh, just a fancy way to say Earth. Oh, it's great. We're learning a lot, and we have a simulation for you Is to- that astronaut ice cream? And, and Cosmo cubes? Did you guys raid my stash of astronaut treats? Uh-oh. Were those yours? Uh, yeah. They were gonna send them up here on the next resupply shuttle. We're sorry. They're delicious. I know, you didn't mean to. I guess I'll just have to sacrifice my treats for the team. Funny you should mention sacrifice. That's what we've been talking about today, too. Yeah, we were hoping you could show us what the world might look like if we all sacrificed for each other. Can you run the simulation and tell us what you see? You betcha. I can always come back to my research on whether it's pronounced potato or potato in space. Huh. I see nothing. Nothing? Yeah, I'm just getting an error message. Huh? It says experiment already in progress. In, in progress? progress? Let me zoom in here. Huh? Yeah. Right here and here, here. Oh, and here, it looks like there's people already sacrificing for each other all over the world and even giving their money to help others. Let's take a closer look. Lots of people, including kids, give money to our church. 
but it doesn't stay in a box somewhere. It goes out to a lot of other people in a lot of other ways. Some of the money pays for things we need in kids club, games, equipment, snacks, and even the sticker you're wearing. Things to help kids have a fun, welcoming, and safe time in kids club. Some of it goes to pay for things that help people feel welcome, like coffee and soda. Some of it goes to make experiences like camp. Some of it goes to all the different ways people learn about Jesus, like all the groups that meet in our buildings. And also Bibles, videos, music, and apps. And some of it even goes out to people who need it in our city and to disaster relief around the country and even out to other countries, to kids in Nicaragua and people escaping bad situations in Nepal and people helping the sick in South Africa. We try to do our small part to help make the world better, outside our community and inside. For all the people who give because God has given them so much, we all feel grateful. So there's a lot of sacrifice happening around you guys already. Well, thanks for the info, Captain. Ciao for now. No problem. Ooh, okay. Potato. Potato. Incredible! There's so much sacrificing for others happening all around us. I wonder how we can be part of it. You said it, and the dude provides. The dudometer, that is. Let's see what it says. Oh! It's our mission for this week. Uh huh. Ask God what you can sacrifice for someone else, then do it! <laughs> Kids Club, it's your turn to decide. Should we execute on the mission or not? What do you say? That's a yes for sure. Let's try it. See how it goes. Okay. This message is self destructive. And G now five, we're good. Four. Three. How is this still happening? I bet there's a bug in the machine. I bet it's hot. 